Okay. Today, I um, just wanted to start by reading from Philippians chapter 1. And, uh, and, and this is a prayer which Paul prays to the church of Philippi, right? So, um, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 3. So, this is what we see. Um, Paul praying this, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Okay, so, <clears throat> so you know, so some of us that that could be a fear. You know, really, will I really fulfill? Will I really complete uh, what God has in store for me? Will I really um, do all the things that God has called me to do? Will I be able to do that physically, emotionally? Um, when we face challenges and all that, um, well, well, this is what we see here. Paul is praying and he's saying, you know, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion. So, from God's side, there is no hesitation, right? From the uh, from the part of the Lord Himself, there is there is no hesitation. There is no um, there's nothing that is holding him back, and we know that. And uh, um, so. One thing is from our side, so we can be confident, we can be full of faith, saying, you know, the Lord, well, there's nothing holding him back. So why should I hesitate? Right? Why should things hold me back? Why should I withhold? Because he will bring it to completion. And a lot of it is, um, you know, his grace, his strength, and our willingness, and the posture of our heart, right? So we can pray and declare the same thing. Lord, I'm confident of this thing, of this very thing, that you have begun a good work in me. You will bring it to completion. You will bring it to fulfillment in Christ Jesus, right? until the day of Christ Jesus. So it's an ongoing thing, and he is bringing things to completion. Right. So let's pray. Father God, we, we thank you, Lord. Lord, even as we've read Philippians 1 and 3 to 6, Lord, we um, Lord, we appropriate that for ourselves, Lord, and we acknowledge, O oh God, and we come to that place of confidence and faith that you who have started a good work in us, Lord, you will bring it to completion, Lord. Lord, you will not leave, leave things hanging, Lord. You will not keep things unfinished, God. You will bring it to completion, Master. Lord, and we are mindful of that, we are assured of that, Lord. And so, Lord, our response to this is that, Lord, have your way in us, Lord. Have your way in us, God. We don't want to withhold anything, God. Lord, we don't want to, Lord, stand in the way of your work in us, Lord. So we yield, Lord, to your work in us, Holy Spirit. We yield, we give ourselves, Lord, to your work, O oh God, that you will change, rearrange, Father God, strengthen, and Lord, establish things in us, Father God, and bring it to completion, Lord. We pray for every area of our lives, God, our personal lives, Father God, our personal spiritual lives and growth, God, our family, God, ministry, Lord, um, Lord, work and profession, Lord, and maybe we are students, Lord, Lord, every aspect of our lives, Father God, we commit into your mighty hands, God, Lord, we pray that, Lord, as we journey through, that you will bring all this to a beautiful completion, Lord, in you, Master. We thank you. We commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So today um, we will continue. Um, we were looking at transition, right? Leadership transition, and uh, um, I mean it's a, it's a very important um, topic, and um, I guess it can be a you know a, a topic for advanced leadership uh, session, but uh, we are actually looking at it initially itself, uh, like even before we look at teamwork and, and all that, because you know. In um, a ministry kind of a setting, we uh, we see that um, uh, in a ministry kind of a setting, or 
um, especially church, you know, we see that this is a possibility, right? And in today's uh, like world or today's scenario, you see that this is a re reality. So as leaders, it's best that it's it's good that we uh, we are equipped for it, and uh, we um, we are um, you know empowered, equipped, and we are aware of of these things so that it doesn't um, you know. Um, and normally, you know, transitions are never easy transitions are never comfortable um, but <clears throat> shouldn't happen you know we shouldn't we should be prepared and we should know what to do okay so and in a church kind of a scenario or a ministry scenario we've seen you know so many things happen in the world um in the in the kingdom of god like transitions happen all the time transition happen in a very positive way like um you know, maybe like Moses and Joshua, and where um, it was prepared, and and Moses actually, you know, laid hands and prayed, and you know, well ahead of time. And, and sometimes transitions take us by surprise. You know, maybe an untimely death of a leader, uh, or or maybe some kind of a, you know, an unpleasant thing like a, maybe a moral failure, maybe an issue with integrity, and uh, we see that also in the in the church. Um, scenario, right? Um, maybe some moral failure, maybe something with something to do with finances and all that, and it's an issue of integrity, and and the leader has is, is has to step down. You know, it's come comes to light and uh, step down, and there is a transition. And when there, whenever there's a transition uh, for the leader who is actually taking that place, um, uh, the, the you know there is there is such a turbulence, right? There is such a uh, I mean unpleasantness. Um, so one has to you know, one can't escape it one has to face it boldly and and that's why we are looking at you know this uh, very practical you know though very important and practical thing of leadership transition right so we we looked at a few things uh, last class we looked at how uh, the first of all you know our eyes our focus need to be on the lord because a lot is going on right a lot is going on people are talking people are comparing and um, and and so even our own emotions are, you know, there's an upheaval, right? Okay, um, I need to do the right thing, and uh, there could be anxiety, uh, there could be, you know, will I ever measure up, and all those kinds of things, questions going around. So we need to keep our eye on the Lord. We need to keep our focus on Him because He's bigger than this, and He has promised that He will lead. Um, he is the Good Shepherd, so the Good Shepherd leads us through, you know not only the, the green pastures and still waters, but also through those times, right, to the to storms as well. So uh, keep our focus on it. Make decisions out of a pure and sincere heart. That's the second thing we saw. Like we said that uh, our decisions and everything need to be made out of a pure heart, uh, out of a sincere heart. It's, it should not be something that, uh, uh, you know, something that uh, out of a biased uh, uh, mentality or uh, something to you know in, on a defensive in a defensive way right it has to be uh, out of a pure and sincere heart for the greater good <clears throat> not to put others down uh, not to present the uh, you know someone in a poor light nothing at all so we do it out of a purity and out of a sincere heart right and while talking about the heart it's important that we guard our heart, right? Uh, it could be fear, it could be something, it could be bitterness, it could be offense. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so, uh, the temptation to be judgmental, the temptation to condemn, you know, criticize, all that could be there, but we need to protect our heart. And, uh, as we are focusing on the Lord, and uh, and also when when there's a you know uh, when people are talking and then so we don't do a you know we're not doing a pr exercise to protect our image and everything but um even if it means that uh, people don't understand and uh, you know uh, people are just talking uh well to up to a certain point you know we can present the facts but then people right uh, form their own opinions and they have their own perception so well we just leave that aspect to god what we've done a bit we presented the facts, but still, if people are unable to receive it, we leave that to the Lord. Let Him vindicate. Okay. Um, so the uh, the other thing that we saw was that we need to focus on the journey that's ahead. 
okay focus on the big picture focus on the vision okay what is ahead what is it that we need to uh, uh, what what needs to be done right so so big thing is that uh, you know um, if we are not careful this transition in in leadership or this transition time in leadership can actually drain our energy emotions everything right uh, where we uh, and uh, you know our focus uh, could shift because of that we could get distracted because of that so it's a, it's a difficult thing while it is um, you know it is important to be done well to be managed well uh, but it also important that our focus needs to be on the vision needs to be what needs to be done right and so uh, while we okay this is one thing that we are doing that we need to go through this we need to journey through this but if we bring our focus back to what is it that we are here for you know as a church as a ministry as disciples of the lord why are we here and what are we doing right always we need to come back to that main issue or main focus and it is it depends on the leader it depends on the leadership team to to bring that focus back right uh, and not be distracted okay then i think this is the last thing we saw last class uh, that is to keep the core people together like the core team or the leadership team so we looked at you know different um you know when we whenever we look at a church or ministry or gathering we always have the crowd community core uh, um, and com committed crowd community com crowd community committed and the core right so um so keep the core together the ones who carry the weight the ones who carry the weight of leadership keeping the core together so and these are people who will help carry the weight of transition of leadership and uh, journey through that transition so um they need to they need to know they need to understand uh, all that's uh, happening they might have uh, you know questions and uh, they might have doubts and all that all that needs to be clarified and uh, uh, it it needs to be explained clearly right so so then the change and uh, the reason for change etc can be communicated well to the, the community right okay and uh, in communicating the 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 message uh you know let it be the truth okay and let it be one singular message and only the the, the leadership can actually do that right so it, it cannot be any deviation from the truth for the sake of managing maybe some mistakes made right uh, or covering up some mistakes made no it cannot be right, you know saying something for the moment in order to cover up the mistake of the organization maybe of the ministry if it is the truth well it has to be told this is what happened or this is what is happening right so um it cannot be like different people in the leadership cannot be talking about you know 10 different things right um then it's going to confuse it's going to further create confusion right so the truth the truth is singular right the truth is exclusive so um, speak the truth declare the truth and uh, have the understanding okay well, this is what needs to be told and no compromise and no deviation from it right so that there is one singular message that goes out okay um what would also happen uh, during uh, uh, transition in leadership is also that there could be some places that uh, or some functions or some responsibilities which are um, which are which have uh, no place of leadership in the sense in the sense the, the leader is not there you know, maybe uh, maybe there could be three things four things which you know which are which require leadership now so the the thing is to either to appoint a new person to do it or one has to step in oneself right and it is yes an increased load but uh, it is with the understanding that it is for a season right let's say um, you know there is a um, you know particular area of ministry for which there, there is a 
transition okay maybe let's say men's ministry or or let's for example take a think about men's ministry and there there it's a there the transition has happened and there's no one suitable who's there then what would happen is the leader himself or herself has to you know um you know step into that area of ministry and um, and take care of it right um if we are able to appoint someone to do that to take care of that responsibility that's fine but if not then the leader himself has to step in and take care of that area of ministry you know um, so obviously if it's a man then it has to be you know someone of the same gender men's ministry right um so appoint the right people otherwise you need to step in and be ready for the added responsibility right well the other thing is there could be many questions there could be many um uh, issues um uh, people could be curious um you know there's the two things to it you know, people are general uh, people could be uh, it could be just a idle curiosity you know they're not uh, they're not really concerned about the issue but they're curious anyway and they ask questions well fine but there are other people who are also sincere and uh, they um, they want to um you know ask uh, they ask the questions because they are sincerely care and sincerely want to know okay either way um whatever be the motive of people's heart you know all the questions can be addressed okay uh if people have questions and then you know there could be a a separate platform where we call people who have genuine questions so, so the ones who are actually genuine it it will be a mix of people who are actually genuinely want to know on and maybe maybe people who are curious maybe people who are hurt whatever but they they would come forward for such a gathering uh, in order to hear from the leadership right uh, why certain things happened and they may have an opportunity to ask questions so that uh, the answers can be received right so so these can be addressed privately and these need to be addressed privately because uh, it's not for the you know it's not for the crowd it's uh, it's it's for the ones who actually have those questions because not not everybody has questions um they they may not even be aware of certain things or not interested in these things they just come and go right but but there are things who people who really want to know these things so yeah uh, these can be addressed privately these can be addressed uh, so there can be a you know uh, a thorough a proper uh discussion and it can be addressed so be prepared for that right um well the next one is uh, when it comes to introducing new things now you know maybe um there are maybe new ministries new initiatives uh, well this is not the right time this is not the ideal time to introduce those right if it's a new initiative it's a new thing um let things b for some time and right? do not introduce new changes or new initiatives at this time right? because if you introduce a new change a new initiative you we really want right uh, we really want the commitment of the people in order to in order to take it forward right as a, as a leader only you can do only so much it depends on everyone else to be able to uh, receive that and, and to take things forward right so wait give it some time before introducing new things maybe you know now that is not the right time to you know if it's a church that's not the right time to say okay we, we are starting an additional service you know um, because well the enthusiasm and everything may not be there and uh, and the added uh, effort that is required to you know have a additional service uh will not be sufficient right for people so uh that is not the right time to do it uh wait and let things settle down let emotions settle down um let people understand and be willing to journey again and so then you can have those new things uh, introduced right um and lastly uh commit 
your reputation into God's hands. You know, just like how he said, okay, um, be willing to be seen as, uh, as as a person who did wrong. Be willing to see him because after you presented the facts and there's no point in just going on defending your actions or defending yourself, right? Um, you just leave that to God. So also, you know, you know, uh, the, you know, the reputation and everything, you know, let God take care of it. Let him be uh, our indicator. Let him be the PR man for us, right? Uh, let him take care of that as well. And he will do a much better job than us, right? So commit that into God's hands. So now this is going to take some time, right? If it's a very serious thing, right? Uh, let's say uh, um, a serious change, a very abrupt change had happened and some... Uh, difficult decisions had to be made so it's going to take some time right it's take some time for everything it cannot happen overnight and all these things that we saw all these 10 things um it's going to take some time it's going to take time for the organization for those who are connected with the organization you know if it is an organization like a like a ministry or ministry organization or if it's a church it's going to take some time to journey through this so understand that right and and be patient as you commit everything into god's hands right um so well you will be able to journey through this okay, okay so that's about uh, transition uh, leadership transition and uh, so any questions here before we move into a uh, a different topic which is about um, Productivity and personal productivity. Any 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 questions here? Uh, Pastor, when we want to do certain things, uh, especially in a church setting, um, mm -hmm. do we also give time for the congregation to adjust? Um, to let's say uh, starting another service. Yeah. Um, so do we do we uh, you know keep keep an extra time for? People to get adjusted, uh, or is it okay if we just start? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the thing is, um, uh, a, a couple of things. You no, know? one is to because if, if it requires um, a buy in from people for this particular initiative, you know, like whatever, um, if, it, if it's going to require a buy in, in a sense, people need to be fully on you know it's it's that kind of an initiative let's say you know maybe like an outreach and you need people to be there um, or, um you know to be completely 100 percent so for it to be um, you know effective and all that so then we need to prepare you know well ahead and uh, and find out if people are willing and if they are you know so and let the whole uh you know initiative come from there right from you know that level then it'll be easier to roll out because change uh, by itself is not you know as human beings we're not comfortable with change like just yesterday i was just talking to a couple of you know uh, senior folks and then they were saying that how when they go to church they'd like to sit in the same place right and uh, they go early so that they sit they can sit in the same chair right and for various reasons one is, you know, it's a shorter walk from the entrance. It's, uh, you know, all those things, you know, they don't have to negotiate and travel, uh, I mean, walk, uh, you know, across people and all that. They're all, they have problem mobility, movement and all that. So, th but the thing is, you know, change is difficult for people. So, um, just, we need to be aware of that. But certain things like, um, you know, uh, service, uh, additional service and all that, well, uh, you know, if if you are convinced that there is a need, and uh, you feel that yes, this need to be tapped, and uh, you know you feel at peace, um, then you just need to you know share that vision with people and saying, hey, we are we need we need to do this because this is what it is, and then just jump right in, dive right in, and also explain, yes, you know this is like plowing, you know it's going to take some time, uh, they they will for this to gain momentum. But uh, you know, this is what we need to do. You know, we will give it some time. This is what we are doing. This is uh, we have this opportunity, and let's let's do this. Right? So, 
uh, one is the communication part of it and uh, the buy-in from the people and moving ahead with the change so yeah so both both side both aspects are important yes perfect. yeah yeah right. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other thoughts on this? See, I I know that uh, this maybe uh, like most of us, I don't know. I'm just assuming that may not have witnessed firsthand these kind of transitions or or been part of it. So. Maybe it's a lot of it is just theory, right? Um, so, um, yeah. So if if we are in or if we have experienced certain, you know, that kind of a situation, maybe we'll have more questions. Uh, but it's important for us to know these things, right? Um, okay. Okay. Now. Um, you know, this when we said, you know, we're looking at this transition. So, um, this is a very uh, the the scenario that we looked at is, um, I mean, an, a, a difficult transition, right? Um, a difficult change because uh, we're just assuming that there's, there's a lot of things going on, um, but also uh, a transition need not be uh, a difficult one. Right, where it is a, a planned transition, where people's hearts are also, you know, prepared uh, to, for this particular change transition, and uh, and then you know we lead people through that um, to to manage that change uh, effectively. Also, you know, it's it's a, it can be a very pleasant, it can be a very uh, you know joyful experience. Also, this going leading people into that transition right so it need not be uh, a very challenging and you know uh, unpleasant one it can be a very joyful transition as well where the person who's transitioning out you know does so with the blessings of the congregation you know goodwill of the congregation and um, the person who's transitioning in also receives that with uh, you know, uh, with all that enthusiasm and uh, and the vision and, and the fresh thing that we're bringing in, but yeah, um, so it can be that that kind of a scenario as well. Um, but there will always be, you know, a kind of comparison from the people who are being led, or um, certain comparisons, right? Uh, whenever there's a change in, let's say, leadership, there's always a tendency to compare the present one. The previous one, um, you know, whether for for better or for worse, right? Um, okay, this was the strength. This is the weakness. This is what we saw. Oh, we never. Oh, this person never used to do that. All that is part and parcel of it. And should there be feedback uh, about this? Should, should, you know, as a leader, you get to hear about these kind of companies, which we which we will ultimately. Uh, this was this was this is how we used to do it. You know, that's how it will come. Right. This is how we, uh, we used to do it. This is how we had so much fun doing this, and and so on. Um, so don't be bothered by that. Right. Don't let it put you down. There is a tendency to get discouraged and say, "Oh man, you know, will I ever measure up?" Or will I, you know? So don't compare. You know, you're a different person. If there's anything that, <clears throat> sorry, any change that we can make. Um, which will, you know, without taking the focus off the direction that we are going, right? The things that we need to achieve. If there's anything that we can, if there's anything that we can learn, if there's any change that we can make, corrections maybe, just go ahead and do it. But do it in a positive way, right? And say, okay, uh, maybe this change this needs to be corrected, and let's let's do that. Okay. Um, so, uh, but be alive to the fact that, or you know, be open to the fact that this there will be. You know, it's it's human nature. So don't be bothered too much. Okay, let's uh, let's look at uh, another topic, which is uh, productivity. Okay, personal productivity. Okay, so when we look at productivity, it is um, it is being fruitful. You know, you know, if you want to use biblical language, 
uh, is being fruitful, bearing fruit, right? So a plant uh, will bear fruit given the right environment, given the right, uh, you know, the, the nutrition and everything, the protection. Uh, it will, it is, it is designed to bear fruit, right? So uh, when it comes to human beings, people like you and I, then and it's not just the right environment and the nutrition, but it also involves the will of individuals, right? What you do with that. Um, so for us to understand, you know, first of all, you know, is productivity, you know, that's a big question. You know? um, yeah, when, when we are I'm in a corporate setting, uh, you know, let's say Pharaoh's court, um, kind of a, you know, that's the analogy, right? You know, Pharaoh's driving us, Pharaoh's really walking, you know, wanting us to make bricks without straw. And he's really, you know, like a slave um, trader, oppressing. So, you know, we have a picture of negative picture of productivity. You know, we are we have targets, we have deadlines. Uh, you know, this is the worldly way of doing things. I need to you know, do this, reach there first, be first, or get things better, and so on. Day in and day out, that's that's like a pressure. And when it comes to ministry, we we sometimes just relax the whole thing. You know, just completely let go. And be passive and say, okay, if things happen, let it happen. If not, let it not. You know, everything is in God's hands, right? Um, now we can completely let go and say, okay, if it happens, oh, glory to God. If it does not happen, glory to God, right? Um, thing. So let's 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 get an understanding. Okay, what is God? What is Lord looking for? You know, in us us as believers, right? Uh, because we need to know that um, when we understand who we are in Christ, um, what we have become in Christ, you know the things that are deposited in our spirit because who we are in Christ, we we realize that we've been given a lot actually, right? And uh, there's some things that we need to do out of our will, out of our choice. Right to make things happen or journey into some of those things that God has for us. Okay, so we need to understand that. Okay, so let's look at uh, you know John chapter fifteen and uh, verses one to eight. Okay, John chapter fifteen, uh, where the Lord says, "I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away, and every branch that." bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit you are already clean because of the word that i have spoken to you abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, okay, that you bear much fruit. So this bearing much fruit, we see it, you know, uh, bearing fruit, bearing much fruit. It, you see that the Father is actually looking. If you, if you, you, know, if you look at the other verses, you see that uh, verses following that, John chapter 15, you see that the Father is actually looking for fruit. Okay, looking for uh, a fruitfulness in a, in, a, in a person's life. So that is the expectation, right? Um, the, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, but if it abides in the vine, it bears fruit. 
not just fruit it bears much fruit okay uh, that is what the lord promises right um he who abides in me and i i am in bears much fruit without me you can do nothing okay he says that uh, by this my father is glorified by what that you stay in the vine that we stay in the vine that we abide in the vine and his words abide in us and we bear much fruit okay so there is that aspect of productivity of fruitfulness that uh, well that the lord is expecting desiring of us you know not as a cruel taskmaster but as a loving father to see that as we stay with him as his words stay in us that we will actually be productive that we will um, be fruitful okay and uh, if you if you see that uh, the the wine dresser you know the father is the wine dresser and it's and he's actually looking examining the 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 tree is examining and he's saying okay he's making some changes to it you know if every if a branch bears fruit uh, then he prunes it he takes away the 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 things that are dead the the, the things that are withered um, so that that's what pruning is so that it bears even more so that the foliage is even more the fruit bearing is even more uh, you know is it, it, even more than before so the father is actually doing that so you just look at your life you know he's saying okay uh, yeah i want you to be even more fruitful okay uh, i want you to become even more fruitful and uh, because you're you're connected to me now right the zoe god kind of life is flowing through you now and you are the fruit bearing part you are the branch and and i'm, I'm doing whatever uh, needs to be done in you so that you can be even more effective even more productive okay so um so when we look at um, you know the fruitfulness on the on the spiritual side we see that yes this whole fruitfulness is because of us abiding when you look at the natural side of things maybe you are working in a you know in a place and working in um, something uh, in an organization and well even the natural side it means that we are being productive right uh, because uh, well what is spiritual affects the natural and vice versa right so so when we when we look at productivity you know uh, let's look at this word efficiency okay being efficient in our work when we efficient when we increase the way we are efficient then our output or what we uh, what we put forth right um it, through our efforts and everything becomes we can say okay it's it's productive right so efficiency is you know if you want to use a formula it's uh, it's the output based on what we are using as our input okay so it's the output meaning the result end result which comes out um because of various factors which is our time uh, the kind of effort you know, not just hard work but the kind of effort smart effort the energy and everything that we put in okay so so there is this time effort creativity and all that that we put in in order to get the desired result okay in order to be efficient which leads to better productivity so when all these things that we're looking at you know when it's time when it's uh, you know physical energy and uh, and and the effort and everything that we put in we see that well as human beings it is we have limits right uh, there's 24 hours in a day and in that there are some you know hours which we use for you know, various things right we rest we we, there's time for food and the intake nutrition there's rest um there's leisure and all that so there there is you know there is this limitation you know, there is okay we can expend the energy up to a certain point and after that we need to rest as well so so how can we be you know how can we increase our efficiency knowing that okay there are some limits like there are these limits to this time there are limits to one's energy and 
you know, depending on how old that person is or the season of life that person is in and, you know, other responsibilities, there are some limits. So within that, right, so how can we be even more, how can we be efficient? How can we use time efficiently? How can we use the resources efficiently and increase our productivity? Okay, so, so, um, so productivity and, uh, you know, being fruitful need not be, uh, need not have a negative connotation, right? Need not have paint a, uh, a very negative picture, um, especially if you're if you're a per, if you're a person who worked in that kind of a setting. Okay, now uh, you know, just personally, I worked in a setting where it was extremely, extremely competitive, extremely uh, aggressive. Um, everybody, you know, it was not a very nice setting. You know, uh, I worked. When I worked in the, uh, across four organizations. Uh, I would say, okay, maybe two of those were okay. You know, there was some kind of a good environment, but otherwise, it was, and especially the function of sales. You know, it was all about how much can you do today, right? How much can you bring in today? How much? Um, so that is your worth, actually, as a as a like a person there. That is all your worth was. How much can you do? How much can you bring in? So, um, so when it came to productivity and fruitfulness and all that, uh, you know, uh, it's it's if if you're in that kind of a setting, it's it's you know you you could actually go back to that you know, and look at that and you know feel all uh, bad about the whole thing of productivity itself. You know. um, but the fact is this: you know, as believers, that we are. The, the bigger picture is this, that we are actually spiritually, this is what is happening. In the spiritual realm, we have access to the very best, the wisdom of God. We have, you know, we're inspired by him. We are empowered by him. So we have, we can actually receive and put it to good use. And God, and, and over and above that, the Lord is looking at us. He's saying, okay, I'm encouraging you. And uh, you know, as a father, I'm encouraging you. And as a, uh, you know, uh, as a, as one who has got this access to everything, one who is inheriting all this, you know, and, and I'm empowering you to do your best so that you can be fruitful. So, God is for us, and He is actually encouraging us. So there is that shift, right? So it's not okay. I I don't get any value if I'm not productive for a day. But you know, I I work from a place of value. Okay, I work from a place of great self worth because of my identity of who I am, and from that place I bring in, um, you know, I bring in fruitfulness. From that place I work, I make some choices, I make them decisions, I yield um, to the leading of the spirit. I you know press on, as Paul would say. To apprehend those things, to lay hold of that for which Christ has laid hold of me, right? And it requires effort. Okay. Number one, it requires effort. It doesn't just happen. Okay, it requires effort. It requires time. Us investing time. It requires that. It requires our energy. Right? So these don't come. Uh, for a human being, a person, it doesn't come as uh, it's not an unlimited resource in the sense. Yeah, we need to, you know, rest, refresh, and get back. So within that time, you know, how can we be um, very, very? How can we if, be efficient? Okay. So here are some practical things. Okay. So with that, um, you know, that's the that's the background, and we just took some time to talk about that background so that we. You know, in our wanting to be efficient, we don't do it out of a different context. Okay, it's not that you will, you know, we we uh, you know we will gain a self worth or we will gain we will perform so that we will be accepted by God. None of that. Right? We know the context. It is from that place of reassurance that we actually do more, that we actually stretch right and and bring in more. From a place of great reassurance. Okay, so uh, that is why I'm just taking some time to dwell on that. Okay, so here are some practical things that we can do. Okay, uh, first of all, we organize. 
Okay, we looked at organize. Uh, you know how we need to organize people, uh, how we need to organize finances, um, you know our ministry, right? So that uh, we can actually be better at what we do. So simple things like be organized um, so that you can we can be efficient. Okay, so organize would mean. You know different things in uh, all the tasks that you know, you know that we're looking at maybe ministerial tasks maybe things maybe you're working in an organization you know how can you be better organized so that you can be efficient so one of the simple things is you know um, access to information right we need information in order to be effective uh, it could be information about people it could be information about you know whatever uh, different things but is that categorized and is that easily accessible okay i guess we'll take a break and then we'll come back uh, to this thank you <laughs>